Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. You're watching Unlimited Options Investing. In this video, we're talking crypto. And whenever I think of cryptocurrencies, I can just not wrap my head around it. The amount of money that's in crypto that's just sloshing around, like almost $3 trillion in the entire asset class. Whereas when you look at the gold market that has what, $10 trillion and how long has gold existed and been a source of value. And even comparing it to the biggest companies in the S&P 500, Think about it, real life Apple, which has all these phones and devices and software and has existed for how many years, is worth the same amount as all of crypto. Microsoft, which has provided immense value over the years as well. That one worth about 2.5 trillion, Amazon 1.75 trillion or whatever it is. You get my idea. Whereas crypto has three trillion dollars in it, which is absolutely unbelievable. All these coins, all these different functions, way over my head, but I like looking at the technical analysis, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna take a look at coin market cap. We're gonna take a look at the favorites, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum, Cardano as always, and I also wanna take a look at XRP, Solana, and uh, Mana, which is, I think, Decentraland, or something like that. It's a bunch of very interesting stuff going on in uh, crypto lands. I'll admit, I still am a complete noob when it comes to the functionalities and just understanding crypto and coins and what each one does or whatever but we'll look at the technical analysis we'll look at the charts and let's get started so if this is your first time stumbling on the channel welcome aboard hit that subscribe button here at unlimited options investing we talk everything from stocks crypto options etfs and we're investing for the long term as always smash that like button and let's get started all right so let's first take a look at coinmarketcap.com so if we first look at bitcoin right now at $49,718 over the last 24 hours. It's up 2.45% over the last week, negligible, uh, pretty much up close to a percent, half a percent. Uh, secondly, Ethereum above that $4,000 mark at $4,000.36, up again marginally over the last 24 hours and down on the week about 4.22%. Uh, and this makes sense because when Ethereum and Bitcoin were going up. And in recent history, Ethereum has actually been outperforming Bitcoin on the upside. So it makes sense that it's actually doing a little bit worse uh, on the downside, right? So a bit more volatile, but we're seeing uh, more overall growth in the short term with Ethereum. Right now, Solana is at $171, down 12% over the last seven days, up 1% over the last 24 hours. And Cardano, this one used to be the third biggest one uh, when it was above $2, now at $134 faring a bit better over the last 24 hours at 4% and down 2.62% over the last week. We're also taking a look at XRP. This one's sitting at 82 cents, down 1.26% over the last 24 hours and up uh, marginally 0.41% over the last seven days. Dogecoin at 16 cents, Shiba Inu at 0 0.00000003428 cents at $18 billion and Dogecoin at $22 billion. And taking a look at the candlesticks, so we're first taking a look at Bitcoin. And I keep saying on the channel, double bottom, double bottom, double bottom. And oftentimes what I find is that, it, is that these patterns don't always really play out very picture perfectly the way you're expecting them to until you do get a confirmation and then it's really on. So Bitcoin, for instance, if we draw, for example, right here and right here, this could be a double bottom if and only if it passes the key zone. So, so it has to pass that 50, just past the 20, has to pass the 50, it has to break the top of this resistance and uh, the key resistance really at $53,000, $54,000. Because if we get something like this, then it confirms, it confirms this actual double bottom. But, but if what happens is it just goes something like this and then down, of course, then this double bottom doesn't actually exist because it never confirms to be one. It's more so identifying potential patterns that could form. And, and if they do come true, then okay, you know what? Then it's on. Let's continue toward the direction and see if it really does play out. And that's the point, again, for me, for technical analysis. If you're trying to find out the likelihood of should I enter, should I exit uh, in the short to medium term. Again, long term, you're looking at the fundamental story. And always you're always trying to find the best possible entry and exit. But, but really, in the long term, does it really matter if you go into Bitcoin at 50,000 or 45 or 40? I mean, of course, yes, it does help. But... I mean, in the grand scheme of things, if you really do believe in Bitcoin and where the price could be in the long, 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 long term, you won't care. So that key, key, key zone we're looking at is that $54,000 mark and continuing to break uh, toward the upside above that $50,000 mark. Past that 50 exponential moving average. 
Secondly, we're taking a look at Ethereum and we're seeing similar patterns across crypto in general because usually when you get positive sentiment into the sector, a lot of the coins end up performing really well. So again, with this one, can we potentially draw a double bottom? You could, again, but we'd have to see more strength past that 20, past that 50, and then again, breaking maybe this blue line, uh, the top of the resistance here at around $4,500. I'm probably feeling a little bit better about Bitcoin because we are because we did open and close above that 20 EMA, whereas with Ethereum right now, we're still actually below it. We opened and we're still closing below that 20. So until we see more upward pressure, uh, Bitcoin is looking the better of the two coins, but uh, we're closely looking at Ethereum as well to break those key zones. Next up, taking a look at ADA, Cardano again. This one, you don't really see that double bottom, but you see a similar kind of pattern. So again, you have the base formation here and, and a lower base over here, but again, we found upward pressure. We're above that 20 EMA, we pulled back when we found resistance at the 50, and right now we're still sitting in between both of them. So what we want to see, and this also would work as well as two different bases, this one just being uh, the second, is if this one does want to rebound, we have to get back above that 50 and then break those key zones, which would probably be the resistance point where this blue line is around the $1.50 mark, which also is another psychological key zone when it comes to just human psychology. It's a nice round number, a dollar, a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy-five, two dollars, and you get my idea there. And this one's fallen off quite a bit. If we take a look, let's say what, at the weekly, we're looking at the four hour right now, but at the weekly, this one has fallen off a cliff. We had a huge run up, a lot of positive sentiment. Where it ran up from levels uh, near where we are right now at $1.20, $1.30, and running all the way up to what, above $3 to $3.10, and then all the way down, slicing right through that 20 EMA, all the way down to where we are right back to where we started. And it just shows how fast things can move toward the upside or toward the downside and sentiment really moves stocks when everyone's really really bullish on something it'll go up in the short term and when everyone's really 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 bearish on something they're selling 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 creating a lot of pressure toward the downside uh, and let's go back to our four hour time frame and looking at xrp this one i've never taken a look at at the channel but i've been talking to a bunch of friends telling me about the fundamentals of the coin uh so i'm like you know what i'm gonna start looking at it on my uh, channel over here and taking a look at the chart. So this one, uh, this one's a bit more choppy than the other three that we just looked at right now. But again, we had a similar uh, downward move just like everything else uh, last weekend when we dropped all the way down to about 58 cents, recovering immediately back to about 75 cents and then going all the way up to about 92 above that 20 and that 50 EMA, but finding resistance, we could probably draw a line right where we found that resistance, which coincides pretty nicely with where the price was maybe a week before that over here. So what do we need to see with this one if we want to see a recovery? So again, back above that 20, back above that 50, and then continuing to move up past this 92 cent marker, maybe past a dollar, and then it would really be on. Again, Bitcoin and Ethereum are moving. The altcoins won't be far behind them. Solana, so this one is, I think, similar to Ethereum in a way. Excuse my ignorance when it comes to coins and their uses because I don't understand crypto and its functionality very much uh, whatsoever, but I like looking at uh, the technical part of it and uh, if it makes money it makes money right so with solana this one uh this one's had a lot more downside than the other ones keep finding resistance on that 20 ema we touch it and then we go down we touch it and then we go down right now we're forming a little bit of base in this area if you want to draw a line uh, from where we form this base it coincides very 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 nicely with the resistances back from back in october a couple months ago which is around the 165 170 level so what do we want to see moving forward? We want to see continued accumulation. We want to see continued buying pressure at these levels and eventually breaking that 20 EMA, that 50 EMA, and probably that key zone uh, moving forward will be around, let's say, 185. We're able to get back up above that one, then we could see continued recovery. Again, it all just depends on the bigger coins uh, moving these smaller ones. And lastly, taking a look at mana, I think this one is like Central Land or something like that. It has to do something with uh, the metaverse or a digital land or something. I, I, just think that, I think the idea is cool, so I want to take a look at the chart as well. So this one's kind of more sideways. You could, again, point some potential bases right here, right here, and right here, which would be around the $1.30 mark. Again, we could draw a line uh, with that one as well very easily. Again, where we're finding that buying pressure, where we're finding that support. Does it coincide very nicely? A little bit. It, can, it coincides with the support we saw about a month ago and maybe a resistance once or twice. Uh, but that is a key level where we're seeing buying pressure. And just like all the other coins, the cryptos move kind of, sort of similar, depending on what's going on. Uh, we want to see continued buying pressure, uh, breaking that 20 to 50 and breaking the key zones with this one probably around 
let's say $4.45, $4.50, breaking that and continuing moving toward the upside. All right, and that's the end of my video. Thank you very much for watching. Drop me a comment below and let me know which coins you trade or invest in and why. As always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.